Last Saturday, Danny Duffy pitched the best game of his career with six and two-thirds innings of perfection in a one-nothing win over Baltimore. Now Duff heads west to take on the surging halos and the power of Pujols and Trout. Royals and Angels next. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tonight from the Big A in Anaheim, it's game one of a three-game series between the Royals and the Angels. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Rex Hudler, and Danny Duffy certainly was the story last Saturday night. But you go back offensively and take a look at the way the Royals have played the Angels the last three years, including last year when they took two out of three. It's a good sign. It's a nice light air out here in the Southland, Fizz, but the guys, for some reason, love to hack. And it's a beautiful thing to see. They were 7-5 and five since 2011. But, oh, last year, 22 runs in three games? Oh, that's music to the starting staff's ears. And one of the guys is Billy Butler. That's right. Vargas, in the Angel uniform last year, he took him oppo with some popo. Hopefully, Billy Butler can find that stroke here at the Big A. It would be a beautiful thing because that would help that pitching staff in a big way. They'll need to because C.J. Wilson is going for the Angels, and he has been terrific. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Royals against the Angels in Game 1 tonight. Chevy dealer. It's Chevy Truck Month. Visit your Kansas City Chevy dealers. Buy the Missouri Lottery. Try the Missouri Lottery's new Lucky Sevens playbook and buy AT&T mobilizing your world. It's a beautiful night at the Big A for the Royals and Angels. KC has won 15 of their last 17 season series. Let's check out the starting lineups for Ned Yost's squad tonight. 
as Nori Aoki will lead things off, then go Escobar Hosmer, Butler, Gordon, Valencia with Kane, Siriaco, and Hayes rounding it out. Right now, let's go to Joe Goldberg. Thank you very much. The big news, obviously, for the Royals yesterday was Mike Moustakis being sent back down to AAA and Jimmy Paredes coming up. So Danny Valencia is the third baseman right now. Ironic that it was three years ago in June that the Los Angeles native Mike Moustakis was called up and he played his first ever game here at Angel Stadium, got his first big league hit, and then the next day his first big league home run here. But Ned Yost saying that the decision wasn't really that difficult because it was the right time to send him down. He was struggling, and they felt like about 10 days ago when there was talk about him going down, he still had some of his confidence left. But they felt like, in Ned Yost's words, his confidence was at the lowest he had ever seen it. Send him down, try to get him right. There's no timetable on when he will come back. But Alex Gordon, who has been through this before, said, you know what? You've got to just go down there. It's not easy. Have a positive attitude and work hard. It worked well for Alex Gordon. Hopefully the same for Mike Moustakis. Indeed, because he is a very determined young man. And just talking to Southern California scouts today, they raved about his talent. And they believe that he will get it done and get back to the big league level with the Royals and find success. Well, C.J. Wilson will get the start for the Angels, and he has a 5-3 and three record with a 3-1-6 ERA in nine starts, but he's coming off his second career shutout in his last start, a five-hitter against Tampa Bay. Yeah, he, he's very consistent. No question about it, Fizz. C.J. Wilson, he's going to have these guys defending behind him. Ionetta, he's not too shabby. He's still not 20% of the base stealers. Pujols over at first base has his legs under him. And no problem with his foot this year. He's got real good soft hands over there. And C.J. Wilson will throw just about everything, Rex. I mean, he'll cut his fastball. He'll be changing speeds, changing speeds on his breaking ball as well. Yep, fastball slider change up and his fastball he cuts it into right handers and, and it's something that he'll bear it bore in there just like Chicago's last left hander that the Angels faced he threw some cutters as well um, he he throws a lot of pitches typically this guy he came is coming off of a start where he threw 127 pitches and he's averaging 117 per outing we'll see that 127 pitches that was the second most in his career if he'll wear down we'll see him tonight He's typically a pretty strong guy. Six of his nine starts this year are quality, and his worst start was the opener. Six runs in five and two-thirds innings in a loss to Seattle. And right now the Royals want to get their offense going, an offense that is seventh in the American League in batting at 255. Our umpire, the crew chief, is Mark Wegner. Behind home plate, that's the important guy, Andy Fletcher because Wilson is a strike thrower and Danny Duffy still learning how to be one. Chris Siegel we saw in that last series home stand and now he has moved to this series with a different umpiring crew. Chris Siegel a young umpire called up from the minor leagues from last year. Yeah you know a lot of injuries to umpires this year Fizz and also the two extra crews that they have up in New York but Mike Winters is typically the crew chief on this umpiring crew here but he's hurt. Aoki takes strike one and the Royals have had success against left-handed pitching of late. They're 13 and four their last 17 road games against left-handed starters. Aoki sends it back up the middle and Rexy has uncanny success against Southpaws. It's fantastic. That's what you want it. Wish they all had his numbers. Get on base any way you can. He's now hitting close to 340 against left-handers this year. Balls up, elevated on the outer half. Roll him up the middle. Now, typically, C.J. Wilson, a left-hander, is going to face a lot of righties. Likes Ibar to play a little more in the hole. He likes these guys to pull. So the, the middle of the infield is going to be wide open. David Freeze, a very good defender at third base, in a bit, almost even with the bag. And Escobar takes strike one. Oh. 
Aoki is a threat to go. Five stolen bases this year does not go as Wilson works Escobar away and the count goes CJ's way. Nothing in two. Esky batting 281 with a couple of home runs and 17 runs driven in. Escobar hitting 385 against lefties and one homer. Speaking of homers, right handers have hit five off of CJ Wilson this year, 237 average. But you know, CJ's been dealing, especially at home here. Last four home starts, he's 3 0 with a 169 and hadn't given up a home run in, in any one of them. Escobar punches it to the second baseman, Howie Kendrick, who makes the play. Well, there are three things you need to know about Angels pitching this year. You see what they've done at home and on the road, a 4-3-4 ERA at the Big A. But impressive with the number of strikeouts because at the beginning of the season, Rex, there were two sure things in the rotation. One was C.J. Wilson. The other was Jared Weaver. Question marks after that have been answered. Fastball on the inside corner. Strike one to Eric Hosmer. Hosmer had a rough homestand going five for 36, but prior to that, his road trip to San Diego and Seattle was fantastic when he hit 452. Checks his swing on one that wanders outside, one and one. Hey, CJ Wilson does have a step off move. And that's that's when he comes set. He'll step off real quickly with his left foot and fire it over to first base. He has an average move overall. Aoki does not go, and another one wanders outside. Two balls and one strike. Osmer overall at 292 with a home run. He hit that on the road at San Diego. Royals come in at 500, 23 wins, 23 losses, five and a half games back of Detroit, who's really been struggling of late, losing four straight. And that is line to the third baseman, David Freeze. So Escobar with a soft liner to second, Hosmer with a sharp line drive to third, and CJ's getting a little bit of good fortune here. Breeze came over from the St. Louis Cardinals where he helped them lead them to a National League pennant last year. And here is Billy Butler who had a wonderful series last year when the Royals took two of three at the Big A. By the way Detroit did win tonight seven to two over Texas so their four game losing streak is over. CJ comes inside to Billy. Butler went eight for 13 at the Big A when the Royals took two of the three games, including a five for five game. Runner goes, pitch is swung on a miss, thrown by Ionetta, not nearly in time, and Nori has his sixth steal of the year. Excellent takeaway. That's what gets it most of the time. If you can get a good jump, you're going to beat the ball. So Butler with a 1-1 count. He got that big hit in their 3-1 win on Wednesday. A sacrifice fly in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nori was the one that got him started with one out. With a perfectly placed bunt single on a 1-2 count. Billy loves the Big A, loves the West Coast. Perfect weather just about every single day. Temperatures in the 80s. And that will get away from Ionetta, and Aoki will scoot to third base. 
Ah, that's that's a pass ball all the way. Baseball players have a sarcastic term they use when a catcher misses a ball like that. Box me up a crate of those. <laughs> So Billy trying to give the Royals the early lead. Royals coming off a five and four home stand. Butler takes high and tight. So Billy gets the walk and they'll leave it up to Alex Gordon a lefty lefty matchup that favors CJ Wilson with Gordon three for 13. Against the Angels left hander. Three batters before Billy all struck the ball hard. Get get a run home this inning here. Aoki from third. Butler now at first. Two out in the first inning. And Alex takes ball one. Wilson will take a lot off of his breaking ball. We've seen him drop it down to as low as 70 miles an hour. Swung on and missed. One ball, one strike. We told you, Wilson in his last start shut out Tampa Bay 6 0. Five hits. No runs and Gordon this year very strong with two outs and runners in scoring position. 313 with both of his home two of his three home runs. Check swing on one low blocked by Ionetta. Gordon 222 with one homer off the of lefties. Chases one outside the strike zone, and that will even the count for CJ Wilson at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, that was not a good pitch recognition there, Alex, shaking his head. He knows it. That's what he's going to do to the left. He's going to break that slider away from him. And he may go right back to that pitch. Gordon flips it right over the head of Howie Kendrick into right field. Aoki scores, and Casey takes the one nothing lead. Well, Rex, they had two lineouts by Escobar and Hosmer at this time. Gordon's bat dies a hero, and he just was able to sneak it over the head of Howie Kendrick. They'll take it. That's perfect. That ball hung. And Alex, he flinched just a, a, a tick when his eyes recognized it was going to be a hanger, and he was able to lift it over Howie's head. So that's a good way to pick up that hanger. And the run went the stake to go with it. So now Danny Valencia who came in with a five game hit streak and he is the young man right now penciled in just about every single day with Mike Mustaka sent down to the minor leagues. Oh Howie Kendrick showing off some hops but not high enough one nothing KC. And fans if you were wondering Mustaka is playing tonight at Triple A Omaha batting fourth for the Storm Chasers. And it's good to see Omar Infante also in that lineup for the Storm Chasers. He was batting second and was the designated hitter. And we hope to see Omar shortly. But here is Valencia and always strong numbers against lefties. And overall his last five games, 438. It's time for a little liftoff here. Danny boys do for a homer. And there was nobody covering Billy Butler over there. C.J. Wilson just did that on his own. He hopped off. And you know, we used to say in the dugout, he's scared. <laughs> he don't want to throw it home. Well, Billy was not about to steal third base. 
That's not in his vocabulary. Barely outside and low. The Angels are 0 and 5 in Wilson's last five starts after throwing more than 120 pitches. Rex, you talked about the volume of pitches he threw in that shutout. Yes. He has thrown 22 so far tonight in the first inning. Good patience by KC. Wait for the cookie. Now it's a 3 1 count. You know, he's a strong guy, Fizz, but when I, I saw how many pitches he threw in his last outing, I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe he could have some effects from that long outing in this one here, which would be just fine with, with Ned. A different kind of hangover. May ha maybe hang one over the plate he, to Danny Valencia. Like he did to Alex Gordon. Valencia takes ball four and the inning will continue as the Royals have loaded the bases against CJ Wilson. Looked like a pretty good pitch to CJ Wilson. But Chris Iannetta is not your best receiving catcher in the league. I can tell you that. He basically cost him a strikeout by the way he caught that ball. That's where Salvador Perez and Brett Hayes have been very valuable. Hayes really was able to allow Danny Duffy to get some strikes, and we see that with Salvador Perez all the time. I mean, how watch, softly he catches yeah, the baseball. Look at he, heck, that thing almost took his glove off. The seventh Royal to bat in the first inning is coming up. Lorenzo Cain with the bases loaded. He has a grand slam in his career. Butler third. Gordon second. Valencia first. Two out. Fouled off. Strike one. Now he was hunting for his pitch. Didn't matter what he was going to throw. Lorenzo's got to focus more on on his pitch he can drive. The grand slam was off Obaldo Jimenez and the Cleveland Indians at the K last year. You want to get Wilson before he settles down. So they need more than one. Get greedy. But Kane swings and misses at the off speed pitch. 0 oh and 2. Aoki single, then two line outs, a stolen base, a walk to Butler, a single by Gordon that played at one, a walk to Valencia. Now the 0 2 pitch from CJ Wilson to Lorenzo Kane. Outside, one and two. Get you to swing outside of the strike zone early in the count, and he's ahead. He'll, he'll keep doing it. He doesn't want to ha give him a strike if he didn't have to here. This next pitch right here has got to be the one Kane is looking for. He comes back inside and catches the inside corner for strike three. Oh, my. Home plate umpire gave it to C.J. Wilson, but with him loaded up, that's too close. You got a hack or they'll send you back.
career start. Retired the first 20 Orioles have faced on Saturday and won the game 1-0. He took a perfect game into that seventh inning, broken up by Adam Jones, and this will be his first career start versus the Angels tonight. But he came here a lot as a fan growing up in Central California. The Angels lineup, Howie Kendrick will lead things off. Then the ultra-dangerous Mike Trout, the machine, Pujols, Freeze, Crone, Ionetta, Ibar, Green, and Calgo. Kendrick takes strike one. Now, Howie Kendrick hitting 309 this year with a couple of home runs. And for just about every single season in his career, people have been expecting him to lead the league in hitting. He is that kind of talent. Fouled off. You know, this year, he's doing a nice job in that leadoff spot. His on-base percentage is great at 385. He's got nine bags. Been caught a couple of times. Great inside-out hit hitter. He uses the whole field. Duffy comes back with the breaking ball, and it rolls down the line, and it is going to stay fair, and it'll be a single for Howie Kendrick. There was really nothing that Duffy could do. I mean, it was absolutely a brilliant swinging bunt. Yeah, no, Duffy's going to go out there with his fastball. Now, last time he ranged from 90 to 97, and he mixed, his, mixed up his speed times there. And, by the way, the third base lines are padded here to roll fair, to stay fair because of the bunter. Sosha's always liked his field to where... If the ball gets close to that line, it goes back fair. Every well, every ballpark has their own little their home cooking and their own little thing. Well, here is Mike Trout. This is the young man that many call the best player in baseball. Miguel Cabrera, though, of Detroit, has won the last two MVPs, but incredibly talented and only 22 years of age out of Millville, New Jersey. Chase is one away, and he's down in the count 0-2. And, and he's been doing a lot of that. He's been swinging out of the zone. That's the reason why he's, he's scuffling a little bit. He had that batting average over 300 after April, but 185 in May. Still eight home runs and 31 RBIs. Duffy goes low and in. A ball and two strikes. But, you know, Mike Trout has had such success early in his career, Harper, that it's really not fair. These guys are freaks of nature for their age to come up and perform like this. And really, all the other hitters that come up that are young or graded on these guys' curve, it's not fair. Trout, shallow right side, and Siriaco with a marvelous catch because he had played Trout over near the second base back, so had a long way to go. Yeah, he tried to doink one in there, but Siriaco wasn't going to let it happen. All right, defensively, around the horn, by sponsored by Ford. You're going to see some guys out there that have been in there all 47 games. It's a beautiful thing. Now, I think Escobar, if he continues to hit well this year, as well as fielding, could win a gold glove. He's definitely going to win one in his career. If I was a bet man, I'd bet on it. But since I'm not... I think you'll get one anyway, Fizz. <laughs> Does that make sense? Pujols goes after the first pitch, pops it up. Eric Hosmer in foul territory, now back in fair territory, makes the catch for out number two. And Rex Duffy wants to keep this Angel outfit quiet in the first inning because he's been real. The Angels have been really strong in the first inning. Their 36 first inning runs are the most in the major leagues. Well, he's gotten two talented hitters out in Trout and Pujols, and now will face David Freeze. He's back from the disabled list. He injured his right middle finger that set him down for more than two weeks. First game back, went two for five with four RBIs. That game was on Tuesday. And he hits this one high in the air, and Kane says he has it. So Duffy does his job. He allows one infield hit.
and leaves that man Kendrick stranded at first base. It's time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag KC fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. C.J. Wilson will face the bottom of the order hitters eight and nine and then back to the top and Aoki but Siriaco and Hayes first. And Pedro three hits in 12 at bats this year. Wilson tight with his first pitch. Last year, Wilson won 17 games and had a 3-3-9 ERA. He led the team in victories. Strike in the outside corner, perfectly located, one and one. He's a worker. Sinks the fastball and cuts it. 90 to 93. Needs to take some speed off of his secondary pitches. Sometimes everything comes too hard the same speed for him. Siriaco tries to drop it into right center, but Trout with that terrific speed runs it down, and there's one out. Well, the Royals need to support their starting pitching, which has been terrific this year. They come in with the third lowest ERA in the American League at 353 but when you talk about guys getting run support CJ Wilson second to Scott Casimir of Oakland they're giving him 7.6 runs per game and Danny Duffy on the other side is getting 178 Danny had to throw a shutout one nothing in his last start getting help from Wade Davis and Greg Holland but they closed it out a one nothing victory. And here is Brett Hayes still looking for his first hit of the year. You see that bottom line 0 for 22. He caught a terrific game again with Duffy last time out. Good breaking ball and it's an 0 2 count to Hayes. Brett grew up in Sherman Oaks Southern California guy. And he punches that one to the left side. David Freeze has it and throws him out. Tomorrow is a full day of Major League Baseball action, beginning with the Rangers taking on the Tigers and Fox Sports 1.
Then it's the season premiere of Baseball Night in America on Fox as the Royals square off against the Angels. The Major League Baseball doubleheader begins tomorrow at 2.30 on Fox Sports 1 and continues with the Royals and Angels at 6 on Fox. On Sunday afternoon, we're back on Fox Sports Kansas City with the Royals and Angels at 2 o'clock. And that one, it'll be former Angel Jason Vargas against young right-hander who's really got a terrific fastball in Garrett Richards. Here is Nori Aoki. He led the game off with a base hit up the middle, stole second, went to third on a pass ball. And when the Royals got the bases loaded, Gordon was able to knock in a run. And there is a slash past Ibar into left. Aoki is two for two. Nice opposite field swing. Ibar reacted a tad too late. It was hit squared it up. It was hit solidly. And it had a little bit of a, of a sailing away effect. Watch how the spin on that ball. He got a late reaction to it, and he couldn't get to it. It's just sunk right up underneath his glove. He's been terrific against lefties this year, hitting 362. And last year, he hit, led all lefties against southpaw pitching. That was in the National League with the Brewers. Now Escobar, and he goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Second baseman Kendrick wants it. He'll take it, and that will do it for KC in the second. George Brett, who is the greatest Royals player from the state of California. A. Kevin Apier, B. Dan Quisenberry, C. Brett Saberhagen, and D. Mike Sweeney. Text A, B, C, or D to 432-432. And here is a drive to deep left center field. And Gordon back near the warning track pulls it down. And the first out is C.J. Crone. And Rex, Mike Sweeney is one of our favorites. He grew up in Orange, California and was a major star, but Brett Saberhagen's hard to beat. The only two-time Cy Young Award winner in Royals history, and of course, the 1985 World Series Yeah, no MVP. question. You know, Quiz, he was outstanding, Apier. They're all good, but remember, I used to love talking about big country. Mike Sweeney's dad, mm -hmm. high school coach had come, and he'd sit here, you know, whenever Mike came to town, and we'd give him all kinds of love, and, and uh, that's a tough question. It is because you really enjoy the excellence of any of them. I mean, Dan Quisenberry, 238 saves, a big part of that, those successful years in the 70s and 80s. And the pitch down low. And, of course, Kevin Apier, he had, what was it, 115 wins in 13 years with the Royals. And also, Apier finished out his career with these Angels here. Yeah. 
part of that 2002 World Championship team. Here is Chris Iannetta. Duffy misses outside. I asked Brett Hayes what he worked with Duffy on last time out and what he wanted to see from him tonight. And he said he wanted him not to overthrow and to breathe calmly. That sounded very sin. And here goes Iannetta with a deep drive to left center. And this game is tied at one. That's the first home run that Duffy has given up since the beginning of 2012. Okay, it's down the middle. Now you have to see it again. That's ex that's right where he's looking. Short, compact swing. He's got some natural lift to his swing. Strong guy. Barely made it out. Fourth home run of the year. Now Eric Ibar, and he drops one into left field for a base hit. You know what Duffy told me that Hayes said to him last year even was he caught him in triple a a little bit last year and, and he said be simple be happy those are really good words to tell duffy keep it simple you got three pitches don't try to overthrow don't try to be more maybe even be a little less and that's what got him through his last outing and why he was so good he changed speeds very well off of his fastball going to have to do that tonight because they're sitting on it and mix up those first pitches. Here's yeah. Grant Green who was a major star at nearby USC and then drafted in the first round by the Oakland A's and then traded to the Angels in the Alberto Cayasco deal and he has played very well this year with the Halos hitting 357. Slide step man that Strike on the outside corner at 95. Ibar always a threat to go. He's stolen as many as 30 bases in a season. Ibar last year only had 12 and was thrown out seven times. Hit to the right side. Look at Pedro Siriaco, a marvelous play. And they get green at first base. Off the bat, Green thought he had a knock. Siriaco, he thought about getting Ibar at second base right here. He goes, oh, no, let's just get the out. Green runs pretty well. He almost beat it out. Not a baby. Duffy That's right. loves that, but the last three Angels have made solid contact on the Royals' left-hander. Iannetta with the home run and a... Single to left field by Ibar. Now one that almost made right field by Green. And here is Colin Cowgill, who's been hot lately, hitting over 300, 293 overall in the season with a couple of home runs. They really think he is a solid fourth or fifth outfielder. He can play all three outfield positions and has a fine arm as well. Hey, that's. That little slurvy breaking ball of Duffy's. He can get more of those over for first pitch. That'll keep him off that fastball. Gonna have to mix in some changeups too. Rex, I thought his ability to keep his fastball down and on the corners was fantastic against the Orioles last Saturday. Oh, I loved how he went from 90 to 96. He didn't he didn't try to air it out every pitch. It used to be all or nothing. He was just, you know, here it is. I'm going to see how hard I can throw it. And a lot of, a lot of young pitchers that have, that are blessed with an arm like that, that's their mentality. They want to blow it by guys. They want to impress. But then, flared to right field. Ibar will come charging around third. Here's the throw to home plate. It is not in time. Two one Angels.
Calcio went with that pitch well. Aoki's the ball wasn't hit all that hard. If it was hit a little bit harder, they might have got him. Hit the plate. So Duffy has given up two runs in the second inning. And Howie Kendrick comes up for his second time. Kendrick grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, and he knew Billy Butler. Billy also grew up in Jacksonville, and Billy was telling me they played on some youth teams, not only together, but as opponents. In there for a strike. What a nice matchup of left-handers tonight. One, a young one, and Duffy, the other a veteran, and C.J. Wilson. Look at that 10 for 10 first pitch strikes. A flare to the right side. Kane says he has it. He does, but the Angels scored two in the second inning. And Duffy finds himself down two to one. Today's game brought to you by Miller Life. Eric Hosmer will lead off the third for Kansas City. Eric lined out sharply to the third baseman, David Freeze. Casey loaded the bases, but scored only one run in that first inning on a single by Gordon. C.J. Wilson. Had a quick and comfortable second inning did give up a two out hit to Aoki but Escobar popped up on the first pitch he threw to Alcides the Royal shortstop. Hosmer takes strike one. Eric second in the American League in doubles with 17 Trevor Plouffe of Minnesota with 18. But Eric hoping to translate some of those doubles to home runs. He has just one. And he hits that one high in the air, but to right center field. And that is exactly where Colin Cowgill is. And that's the first out of the third. Well, our ramp drive of the game. Is Billy Butler. His first career home run came June 26, 2007, and it came in this ballpark. And look at the young Billy hitting it out into the rock pile. What a great memory. Wilson gets strike one across. He walked Butler. Billy's saying to himself, hmm, change up, first pitch. Okay, 
I'm going to look hard here. He's going to throw a cutter in on me. I'm going to get that bat head out. And he does, but it's backhanded by Freeze. Two out. The Angels much better defensively this year than they were last year. They have only made 24 errors, and that is the second fewest in the American League. The Royals, meantime, have made 31, but 11 by their pitchers. Well, that's the difference between this year and last year with the Angels, especially this time of year. Last year, they got off to a slow start, man. And they had the last four years in a row, and that's put them in a, a deep hole they hadn't been able to climb out of. But their pitching and their defense have, has helped them six games over 500 now. Yeah, they were 19 and 27 this time last year, but they're 26 and 20 now because they've won 10 of their last 13. They've gotten hot in May. Inside. Alex singled in the Royal run in the first. Looping a soft line drive over the head of Howie Kendrick just barely missed his glove. And now 3 and 0 to Alex. That's the hanger that came out of that same arm angle and release point that he got that hit on last at bat. That one was a little bit up. This one catches the inside corner and Gordon taking all the way. Royals had yesterday off after finishing that homestand five and four. And he drops a breaking ball on the inside corner on a three one count to run it full. Royals are four and two following off days this year and they were just five and twelve last year. So taking advantage of a little rest. Ball four. Third walk by Wilson already. He only walked two in his complete game shutout last Saturday over Tampa Bay. So it's Valencia's turn who walked his first time up. He has a five game hit streak going, seven for his last 16 to raise his average to 308. I got an all day call on Valencia. You went it with the first inning. Now you're going with it again. No, I'm saying it's, uh, it's an all day. You just have a day. feeling. Yeah, it's an all day call. So okay. he, he, that means he can get it from anywhere from one at bat to, to the fifth. <laughs> he, he's going to go deep. You're giving yourself as much rope as possible, oh. and he hits it. He hits it high in the you air. You can't see it. And uh, this is the time where it is difficult to pick out. Oh. It is finally found by Grant Green. Because the color of the sky right now is the same color as the baseball. Wilson has a 2 1 lead. Major's buddy is having his worst month since becoming a regular in his big league career, batting 182 in the month of May. His manager not worried. 
part of his strength is his mental makeup, but he understands that you know sometimes you're going to go through these stretches. Uh, he has at times before in the minor leagues and coming up to the big leagues where he struggled a bit. Um, you know, hasn't had as many hits fall in, but still he's been productive. Uh, he's been running well, uh, playing great defense, and he's gotten big hits for us. So maybe the overall numbers aren't exactly what uh, we're we're, uh, we're used to seeing, but. They will be uh, as, as we, uh, we get deeper into the season, that's for sure. Well, no concerns there from Mike Sosha about Mike Trout. They love him here in Southern California. And, guys, it's a good point, too. While he struggles at the plate, let's also not forget he leads this team in RBIs. He has the capability of stealing bases, and he plays gold glove defense. No question about it. I mean, they believe in him. Management signed him to a six-year contract on March 28th, which will keep him in an Angels uniform until at least 2020. He's, they've been eating him up with inside fastballs, which is unusual. Usually he'd turn on them, but he, he, he sits, he's a great low ball hitter early in his career. But those pitches right there have been eating him up. As you've said many, many times, this is a hard game. And You'll be eating some humble pie eventually. Oh, there's no Even question. Even the greatest. Yeah, every every player has a piece. Some have the whole pie. <laughs> Duffy's 2-1, and Trout swings and sends it foul. Danny Depp back in the count at 2-2. Two and two. Even though he's had a rough month of May, Trout connected for his first career walk-off home run on Friday and marked the first career walk-off RBI of any kind. You know, I don't really believe in jinxes, but wasn't Trout on the cover of Sports Illustrated earlier this month? Yes, he was, and you had to bring it up. Well, it's their player, not ours. I don't care what. <laughs> I, Just hope, say. I hope he goes O for the series. <laughs> Back our way. He almost sent you a foul ball, Hud, after making that statement. Bring it. Crowd just 22 years of age. 25th overall pick when he was selected by the Angels back in 11. Trout hits it high and deep. Got all of that outside fastball and hits it out. That's the reverse jinx. Well, look. You put it in that spot. That's where he likes it. Down. Talked about him. He's a, he's a, he's a great low ball hitter. Into the rock pile. You can see where Hayes has set his target outside, and his glove was drifting back over the heart of the plate. Now Pooh holds up, and Duffy down three to one. Young man has a linebacker's build and playing Major League Baseball and home run number nine. No rest for Danny is here is Albert Pujols. You know, I talked to Trout before the game. And you know, you know what he asked me? He said, okay, let's take a little, little watches at the Phantom Camp. Nice and slow. Look at the head position. Doesn't even move. Look like he's on a on a golf tee somewhere. Okay, good swing. Look at that elbows. That right elbow is in, way in. That allows him to get the head of that bat there. Beautiful swing. Now back to your conversation with Mike Trout. Yeah. He asked me about the dinosaur that threw out the first pitch at Petco in San Diego. <laughs> he, he, he said, "Hud, I, I, I was watching you guys' game, and you were you were freaking out over that that uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex." He said, "I want one of those costumes too," because he heard me talking about how I gotta have one of those. He liked it.
And he tried to dot the outside corner with the fastball a little bit low and he has suffered his first walk of the game did not walk anyone in seven innings against the Baltimore Orioles. Well the three things you needed to know about the Angels offense we found out quickly this is a team that can score they're averaging five runs per game the Royals averaging three point eight and offensively they've scored thirty six runs in the first inning most in the major leagues Duffy shut them out in the first but they've scored two and one since in the second and third and they're plus forty four run differential second best in the American League. Well they. Royals are fortunate that they missed Josh Hamilton too because he's about ready to come back for an injury probably next week. So they'll miss him. The Angels are missing the Royals Omar Infante who is a very important part of their lineup in that second spot in between Aoki and Hosmer. David Freeze pops it up right side Siriaco wants it. And takes it. Oh, drops the baseball. A quick toss to second will get the force, though. And Pujols is the first out. Once again, Rex, you have not only the twilight, but the smog in Southern California making that ball look like the sky. And it's difficult. Aoki couldn't see it in right field. This is the toughest part of the, of the night here for a fielder on balls like that. Look at Aoki with his arms up. He couldn't find the baseball and yeah. he didn't see it but I, you, you love this how when he couldn't catch it he immediately knew the runner would be halfway so he had a chance at second so he turned right to second base without even thinking a heads up play this is when Darren Erstad when he played all the years of the Angels he, he'd have those amber glasses on out here this time of night yeah, we saw him misplay several, just completely lose him, throw his hands to the heavens as if to say, I have no idea. And then the ball would drop about 10 feet to his left or right. That's what you're supposed to do if you miss it. So you alert your other teammates around you that, that they better get in there and help you. It's really important for infielders on balls that go in the air to the outfield that they point them out. And so the outfielder can at least see. Got him. Good pick off by Danny Duffy, his third this year. You get a little bit far off on that step off move, and you take your eye off that pitcher just one second, and that could be that he gets you. And this is kind of what happened. Look at Freeze is just now, he's barely even off the base. But Duffy was so quick and he gave Hosmer such a good throw to be able to tag him that quickly. That's one heck of an out for him. Help himself. So he has three pickoffs and that's tied for the major league lead and he's been a reliever slash starter. He looks a little like a former angel by the name of Mark Langston who had that snap toss from the waist. And he strikes out CJ Crone, but he gives up a home run to the leadoff batter Mike Trout, and it's three to one Angels over the Royals. Okay. He barely even got off the base.
back-to-back -back series to start off the month of June. Don't miss your chance to join us for a fun-filled homestand at the ballpark featuring a Royals Major League Baseball Network tote bag giveaway. Summer fireworks, a Nori Aoki poster giveaway, and Father-Daughter Day at the K. Plenty of great seats are uh, still available, so get your tickets now at Royals.com or by calling 1-800-6-ROYALS. Well, Mike Trout belted his ninth home run of the year to give the Angels a 3-1 lead. Well, hopefully Duffy won't throw him any more change-ups. That was a change-up that he hit out. And they've been beating him on fastballs in. But he took something off just enough to, for him to speed up his bat. They were taking a lot of his... The right-handed hitters were taking a lot of his fastballs to the opposite field early. Here is Kane, who struck out looking with the bases loaded first time up. And the Royals let C.J. Wilson off the hook in that first. They needed to get a hit from Kane, and he took it looking. It was right on the inside part of the plate. Remember, we talked about the run support his team gives Wilson. And they have been incredibly hot, winning 10 of their last 13. They continue to chase the Oakland A's, who have had a terrific start this year in the American League West. The Angels came in three and a half games back. They've won two in a row. Missing outside. Second time through. Wilson, when he falls behind 2 and 0, 3 and 1, he's pitching backwards, throwing him change ups and sliders. Popped up. And that was the slider right there, Rex. And Kendrick takes care of Lorenzo Kane. I'm sure on a 3 1 count, he was looking for a fastball. So Siriaco comes up, who flied out to center field his first time up. The Royals have one run on three hits. The Angels three runs on five hits. Wilson grew up near here in Newport Beach and was the Texas Rangers fifth round draft pick out of Loyola Marymount. And did you know that he was tutored as a youngster by former Royal Bud Black? He met Bud because his cousin went to school with Black's daughter in San Diego, and she brought him over to a picnic. And the mom and dad who were visiting with Buddy Black said, hey, you know, my son's a pretty good pitcher. And he said, oh, really? Well, he's heard that a million times. And so they went outside and played catch in the backyard. And Buddy goes, they weren't kidding. This kid is really good. Good off speed pitch and Siriaco way out in front, one and two. When CJ was with the Texas Rangers, he was first coming out of the bullpen. At one time, he was their closer, and it wasn't until Nolan Ryan became the team president. He said, I think this kid can start. That's when he got his opportunity and became a very good starting pitcher for the Rangers. In there, strike three call. Both of his strikeouts have been looking. Perfect spot for it. His pitch count is climbing. You see the 29 he threw in that first inning, and now he is beginning to hit his spots in a perfect breaking ball outside corner to Brett Hayes, desperate for a base hit.
One ball, one strike. Didn't you meet C.J. Wilson when he worked at a department store? Nordstrom's. Really? Mm -hmm. You need to tell that story. Mission Viejo Mall. Here's the pitch and a good breaking ball, and Hayes swings over the top. And you would ask me to tell a story with two out and a one-two count. No, my wife was buying me a pair of slacks, and he was in the minor leagues, and he was working in the Nordstrom's men's sh shop. And uh, they got to talking, and then I strolled up, introduced myself, and became pretty good friends after that. C.J. Wilson right now twirling a gem for the Angels with a 3-1 lead. Here comes Duff. Ball is brought to you by Panera, coming soon to College and King in Overland Park. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit us at your MidwestFordDealers.com. Here at the Big A, it's good to see Salvador Perez getting healthy again. He had injured that web area in between his index finger and his thumb last weekend, and it aggravated. But he was able to take batting practice today, and we just saw him warming up Danny Duffy. And he said he's ready to go, hoping to be back tomorrow night with James Shields on the hill for KC. Chris Iannetta homered his first time up. Long blast. Clear the left center field wall. That was Ionetta's fourth home run of the year, and that would tie the Royals for the team lead. They now have 52 home runs. That's 32 more than Kansas City. Snaps that breaking ball on the outside corner to even the count at two balls and two strikes. This time stays with the breaker and it's fouled off. Over the, over the last two seasons, Chris Iannetta has 85 walks as a catcher. And those are the tops in the majors. He's got a pretty good eye. And he tried to hit that fastball down, and now it's a 3 2 count. The last thing he wants to do is walk the leadoff batter. This has been a very productive offense in the month of May. We even told you the Trout, even though his numbers are down, everybody else's were up. And so he went curveball and it's hit in the air. Aoki has it. And there's one down. 
Rex, I was having a conversation with Danny last year, and I said, when did you really feel like baseball would be your future? And he said, I was a sophomore in high school and came down to watch a game at Angel Stadium and sat in the stands, and I, I watched the game, and I thought, I want to do this when I grow up. That was the first time he said, I was really serious about making baseball my career. You know, a lot of, a lot of guys know when they're young, that that's their calling. So then you got, but you got to work to get it then after that. He was the Royals' third round pick 2007 out of Cabrillo High School in Lompo, California. High bar single and scored. Go ahead run after Ionetta's home run tied it up. High bar scored on Cowgill's single. Jammed him. Siriaco drifting out into shallow right and very quickly two outs in the fourth. Well, the Honda most trusted player, how about must most trusted pickoff move? And it's Danny Duffy who has three pickoffs this year. We've got them. Altuve of Houston. That was a big moment in that game. And then tonight he got David Freeze. Mm. Those are beauties. That step off move. It'll it'll startle the runner up. I'll tell you, it happens so fast. Now Grant Green robbed of a base hit on a terrific play by Pedro Siriaco. Aoki almost was climbing into the stands to try and reach that one, but it's just a strike, and the count moves to one and one. By the way, Justin Maxwell cleared waivers today and accepted his assignment to Omaha. I tell you, they're going to have a pretty good offense this weekend with Infante and Mustakis and Maxwell. Yeah, you got it. Hopefully, he'll heat up because they can use his power bat. Yeah, Rex, I really think that he's a guy who needs to play a lot and get into a rhythm. Yeah, it's it's tough being a role player. You had to do that for a long time. Yeah, you. But you, if you're going to stick up here, you've got to be able to do perform off the bench. Green, nice one between the. Shortstop and third baseman. So you really got to work hard being a, a role player. It's it's every day when you're in the lineup. It's a break. That's like a day off when you're in the lineup. But you've got to constantly be looking for your opportunity. And when you get it, you got to do one good thing, maybe two good things that game you play in to keep you in the majors. And when you don't get a lot of at bats, sometimes you lose confidence. Sometimes your timing's off. And then you know for him. It's kind of a numbers thing. He, I'm glad he's going to go down there and play. Get some at-bats. And for you, you were such a high-energy athlete that it was difficult for you to play every single day. Heck, I'd have loved a chance to play every day, but, you know, it just never happened. Well, was there a was a time, I remember, in 1995 when you played for the Angels, and the second baseman was injured, so they played you every day for 33 straight games, and you went into Marcel Latchman's office exhausted, and you said, Skip, bench me or trade me. <laughs> That's right. I wasn't, I wasn't used to that. <laughs> and he laughed and said, get yeah. out of my office here. Yeah. And then there today at second base. <laughs> Your shortstop that year is now the Angels' third base coach, Gary DeSarcina. Duffy pitches in, and that ball is hammered foul by Colin Cowgill. And uh, Alfredo Griffin's over there at the first base box. There's De Sarcina. He was the skipper at Triple A Pawtucket in the Boston Red Sox organization last year. Cowbill enjoyed his 28th birthday yesterday on the day off. Former Kentucky Wildcat. Cowbill watching Duffy's snap toss try and get his teammate Grant Green who had to dive back in.
just barely got a piece of it and that allows Duffy to get back even with the Angels right fielder. Detroit won tonight over Texas seven to two. Annabelle Sanchez pitched for the Tigers and Scott Baker was moved into the starting rotation called up from triple A. That ball winged to left Gordon has it measured and pulls it down and that will do it for the Angels in the fourth. When we come back, we'll see the Royals top of the order, Aoki Escobar and Hosmer. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, and we're now joined by Jeff Montgomery, Royals Hall of Fame closer. And Monty wanted to ask you about Danny Duffy, what adjustments you've seen him make, and also the fact that every single mistake he makes is being taken advantage of by a very hot team. Yeah, a lot of times you'll throw pitches that get hammered a little bit, and you think, well, I made a pretty good pitch. They just put a good swing on it. It seems like the mistakes that he's making in a night, these Angels hitters are not missing them. They're on their mark, and they usually are for when C.J. Wilson pitches. Well, there is Danny. He has now gone four innings, given up three runs, two home runs, and he had not allowed a home run in two years. Now, granted, he missed a lot of time because of Tommy John surgery, but it was like a 66 in a third inning stretch. Here is Nori Aoki, and Nori on base twice. A single up the middle. He scored the Royals' only run and single to left field his last time up. Todd, I wanted to ask you again about what Nori did the other day. Eighth inning, one out, count one and two, and he said it was the first time he's ever done it, even in his Japanese career, where he dropped a bunt down with two strikes on him. Yeah, and look what it did. It ignited the offense that inning. Freeze in at third. And CJ coming inside. But I'm surprised that guys that can bunt, and it's in it's part of their game set. That they don't bunt more with two strikes because the third baseman's usually always back thinking oh, if he fouls it off he's out he's not going to try it and all you got to do is just square around a little bit earlier and you don't have to rush getting out of the box it's not like you're dragging for a base hit you just wait and you see it down and then run and it's, that's good enough to get on base i and think with two re- strikes the third baseman's always back yeah and i think it's remarkable to see guys like aoki and when they come out early and they work during batting practice on their bunting maybe early in the day to see how accurate they are in placing those bunts. Well, he is his third hit of the day, and he is barely able to get into second base with a leg double. Well, he has three hits on the night, 
And he gets immediately into scoring position. Perfect lob shot right between the left fielder and center fielder. Couldn't have threw it out there any better. Trout and center fielder, you see him, he's playing over there on that third base side. He's just couldn't get to it. He just kind of tried to guide it out there. It was the fourth three hit game of the season for Aoki. Good hustle. He read it. Now Escobar. Wow, and he was going to bunt, Rex, and maybe C.J. Wilson also thought he might bunt because C.J.'s command has been very good, and he threw that one up and in. Corners both in. Escobar, a very good bunter as well. And these are the situations the Royals must be good at. They don't have much power, so they must advance runners. I would think Wilson with this good cut fastball that he has the ability to throw is going to try to work inside to not allow Escobar to push the ball to the right side. We've seen him throw 2-0, and 3-1, and change-ups and sliders. This is a, a fastball count for a hitter. Two and one. Gave him a fastball. And even though you want... Escobar to try to hit the ball to the right side to move the runner over. Sometimes if you get an inside pitch and a guy throws cutters, go ahead and pull him. You can get him over and in. Tries to drop it to right and it will fall foul. And now it's a 2-2 count. C.J. Wilson was 2-0. He's fought back to even it. Fans, what's cooking at the K on Monday night? That will be Camouflage Jersey Armed Forces Night and Value Monday. Tuesday night, T-shirt Tuesday, Greg Holland. And also, Nurses Night at the ballpark. Monday, Tuesday, and ben Wednesday, we'll have Ventura Guthrie. And then Wednesday afternoon, Danny Duffy against the Houston Astros. Lionetti with a discussion. On how to get Escobar out. Boulevard Bratz, by the way, have your beer and eat it too. And that's Boulevard Bratz from Farmland. Bring you what's cooking at the K. Low three and two. Escobar hitting 385 against left handers this year. Osmer waiting his turn on deck. Freeze with two strikes backing up at third. So Escobar unable to advance Aoki. Hosmer has lined out and flied out. Guys, we've seen Wilson throw a lot of fastballs and breaking ball counts and vice versa. And like you mentioned, Rex, pitching backwards. That's kind of an art form that at some point guys, the younger guys like Danny Duffy, hope to get to where they're able to really not be as predictable. And it makes all of your pitches so much better when that element of surprise comes into play. But sometimes it takes... Some experience to get to that point. Hosmer hits it almost the same spot he hit it last time. Trout will make the catch. Aoki will challenge the arm of Mike Trout, and David Freeze will tag him out. Got a little too greedy with two out. And Trout turns it into a double play. Wow. 
He wasn't even behind that ball. That's all arm right there. No body. And notes Prince Fielder expected to miss the remainder of the year. And Jerks and Profar could be out for the rest of the year, too. Ichiro says he's interested in pitching. If the Yankees are short in the bullpen, they need somebody to come in. He says he's got a fastball slider, but like all Japanese pitchers, the splitter is my bread and butter. And the Red Sox lose again tonight. Eight straight. How about that? Now, you guys mentioned Salvador Perez before. Always in good spirits. And this is about ten minutes before we went on the air. We weren't on, but of course, Salvi, as he likes to do, just kind of popped in, grabbed the microphone. He says, how are you guys doing? We said, no, how are you doing? He said, I feel great. I think I could be back there tomorrow. He said, hey, maybe I could even get in there tonight. But he was going to go and talk with the trainers and great spirits actually said, I want to say hi to everybody back in Kansas City. Miss everybody. And I said, yeah, I think everybody misses you too. So hopefully we see Salvi tomorrow. Duffy knocks it down, picks it up. And throws out Howie Kendrick. Joel, he has so much fun with you guys, and he is such an engaging guy, but he needs to stay healthy. The concussions last year and that little injury he suffered this season, he's so valuable for the Royals' success. And Jeff, what might that conversation be about? Uh, I know you were talking a little bit about Duffy and his approach to some of the hitters. Yeah, I think. More than anything, Ned Yost and Dave Allen, they, they just want to continue to see progress. They want to see some consistency from Danny Duffy. We saw, saw what he was able to do in his last start, probably the best start he's made as a major leaguer. See the first out on the pop up here. and uh, so, it, But, it, you know, he's just a guy that, uh, again, needs to continue to make progress. And I think that's what they want to look for, is find a guy that's going to be a consistent contributor to that rotation. Because right now, I believe it's his job to win if he can, keeps throwing successfully. Bruce Chen is coming back, getting closer and closer to being part of this ball club again. But Danny does have that wow stuff like we saw last Saturday. Well, the, the upside on Danny Duffy's, uh, you know, as we know, it's incredible. And the Royals are going to have to tap into that potential at some point. And we were talking that about that during spring training about how the Royals really needed to have two young starters emerge. We figured Ventura would be one, and we're hoping that Danny Duffy would be the other. And with his numbers, you can see he's, without a doubt, has the ability to be a, a, a top of the rotation guy. And again, it's just going to be a matter of him growing into that consistent uh, pitcher that you need to have if you're going to be at the top of the rotation. Let's take a look at our Toyota League leaders. Albert Pujols with a fantastic career, hitting 320 in his career, and of course, 505 home runs, 25th all time. And Danny walks him on four pitches. So he'll take his chances with David Freeze. Second walk by Duffy. A lot of people in the Midwest know that David Freeze story with the St. Louis Cardinals in 2011. 
he had that unbelievable league championship series hit 542 three home runs and of course one to dead center field. Had a great World Series as well but pops it up here. And Duffy did a wise decision I think working around Pujols to get David Freeze. Three runs in five innings. For the Ram Memorial Day sales event, come in for great deals and buy Kingsford charcoal. Slow down and grill. We come to you from the Big A, Steve Fiziak, Jeff Montgomery, Joel Goldberg, and Rex Hudler. In the sixth inning is our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Danny Cauley from Independence. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Danny will win $1,500. But if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the yard, Danny will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Well, Butler is due. He has one home run this year and has 44 the previous two seasons combined. Belted one at the Big A last year in a game where he went five for five and Wilson delivers and Butler takes strike one. Billy walked his first time up and grounded to third his last up bat. He has a five game hit streak going nine hits in his previous 20 at bats. Foul. Obviously Billy he's looking in there. He had a hard ground ball to freeze. In his second at bat. Walked his first time up. Boy I thought he had a really good two strike at bat. In that last Royals game of the eighth inning one and two count got the fly ball to score Aoki and give the Royals a two one lead. He chases though a breaking ball in the dirt and Ionetta will tag him out. That's strikeout number three for Wilson. Very quality pitch. The Wilson throws to Billy Butler. He's Billy's been swinging bat so much better, but finds himself chasing one here out of the strike zone. Wilson has not been able to get two Royals out. One Aoki who is three for three. The other Alex Gordon who is one for one with a walk. And Alex drove in the Royals only run back in the first. Hit him. So the Royals will bring the tying run to the plate and Danny Valencia. And Rex Hudler. Uh, Jeff I've got to tell you because you weren't in the booth at that time but Rex Hudler he's got an all game call going on with Danny Valencia. I thought he had made a call. 
just before he swung the bat on his last time was going to be a home run on the spot. We're going to give him a lot of credit. Yeah. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do. It's just a feel thing. And Valencia, he's been really quiet with his body. I mean, he's not jumping out there, and he's seeing the ball really well. He, he's he's ready to leave the dance hall here. Always has hit left-handers well. Last year, 371 against Southpaws. That was as a member of the Baltimore Orioles. And he knocks that one foul as, once again, Wilson able to get in and down. Lefty's only batting 170 against Wilson, right handers 237, and five of the six home runs he has given up are to right handed batters. Wilson doesn't have that great a pickoff move. He's average at best, and he brings his leg way up, so he's probably over 1.3 seconds home. Anything over that should give. The base runner a good opportunity to steal if you have decent speed and Gordon has that. Two and one. Aoki stole the base back in the first inning. And really he stole the base on CJ Wilson not off Ionetta. Aoki almost to the bag when the ball was still in the air close to second base but. Aoki already had his foot on the bag. Two and two. Once he gets on a roll, he is really terrific. He went nine and zero oh for a two-month stretch from mid-July until mid-September last year. He's pitched very well in the last three starts. Outside now it's full three and two. Will the Royals send Gordon? We'll see. Why not? Yeah, I like the aggressive approach that the Royals have taken here over the last week or so of games. It seems like you're going to put yourself in a much better position to put some pressure on Wilson and the opposition when you're using that speed. And by going, keeps you out of a potential double play. Valencia out in front of that off speed pitch and hits it a long way, but well foul. Alex was moving on the pitch. Since May 5th, the Royals number one in baseball, they stole their 17th. Back in the first, Aoki advancing to second base, eventually getting to third. And how about the Tigers? They were dead last in stolen bases last year, and they are first this year overall. Valencia pops it up. Shallow center. Trout comes on. Two out. Twice Wilson has been able to control Kane. He struck him out looking with the bases loaded in the first and got him to pop up when he let off the fourth. Royals have four hits in the game, three singles, and the bloop double really a leg double by Aoki in the fifth. Strike one. Baltimore beat Cleveland tonight eight to four the tribe had really been playing some good baseball of late They had won four straight one in 13 innings last night but their starting rotation is hurt a bit Zach McAllister on the disabled list elsewhere in the central the White Sox right now losing in the bottom of the eighth inning five to four and that's after Chicago's Chris Sale dominated the Yankees last night, almost threw a perfect game. He was perfect for the first six innings. Broke it up, I think. There's the foul off. They broke it up in the six, but he wound up giving one hit. 
in six innings and struck out 10 Yankees last night. Royals found themselves very fortunate not to have to face Chris Sale in that uh, last homestand. They still had to really buckle down to win that finale three to one runner goes pitch way inside throw to second base not nearly in time and Gordon has himself his second steal of the year. Excellent jump. Home plate umpire Andy Fletcher. He signaled safe that there was no interference. It looked like Lorenzo Kane might have gotten in Ionetta's throwing lane. But Fletcher quickly said no, he didn't. Wilson throwing a lot of pitches tonight. His next will be his 95th. And Lorenzo fouls it straight down, and the count remains two balls and two strikes. I was visiting with Royals Hall of Famer Mark Gubas earlier today, and he said, "Get prepared for a lot of pitches because every time Wilson pitches, it's, he goes a lot of pitches early in the game. Especially we saw that in the first tonight. He moves the ball around and never really allows a hitter to get comfortable. And they say Kane did not go, so the count is full, three and two." And I'll be honest with you, Kane has not looked comfortable in the box against Wilson tonight. And this first at bat, early in the game, first inning, a chance to do some damage. And coming in, in this game, Lorenzo Kane leading the Royals and hitting with runners in scoring position. Good time for it here. Let's see if he gives him a fastball. He's been so unpredictable tonight. Misses low, ball four, and the Royals have two on with Siriaco coming up. Already four walks in the game for C.J. Wilson, only walked two in a complete game outing against Tampa Bay. You talk about him being unpredictable. He's got that arsenal of pitches that allows him to almost be two different pitchers. He's a different guy against the left-handed batters versus the right-handed batters. He throws a lot of breaking balls away to the left-handed hitters, and then he's got the change up and the and the cutter he uses so effectively on the right-handed. Yeah, and so you know, and he's changing speeds with his fastball. So he, you know, he's a, a veteran guy who's manipulating his way through lineups. He knows how to. Siriaco love to add to his 333 average with runners in scoring position here. You got to make him pay. Those walks you can't let him off. He hit Gordon, he walked Kane. Siriaco takes strike one. The other thing about CJ, he very rarely throws two pitches in the same spot back to back. Dotted the outside corner with that breaking ball perfectly. And Ionetti barely had to move his glove. Ibar gets the force in second and gets CJ Wilson out of trouble in the sixth.
RallyHouse.com slash Royals, and you will be entered to win a majestic prize pack from Rally House. Our next two games here will be James Shields tomorrow night at 267 ERA. He has won six against a youngster, Matt Shoemaker, who becomes their fifth starter after they sent Hector Santiago down to the minor leagues and then Vargas and Richards on Sunday. Danny Duffy begins his sixth inning of work. C.J. Crone is the batter. Danny, pretty good pitch efficiency, 67 pitches. Here in inning number six. One one count. I thought that was one of the mo more impressive elements of Danny's last start. He went into the eighth inning and only threw 97 pitches. That's a really good sign for Danny Duffy. Well, it's getting first pitch strikes in there all night. That helps. Yeah, he averaged in his career 18.5 pitches per inning, and the American League average is about 16 and a half. And there was a stretch about the first six innings where he was at 13 and a half. And a lot of people saying, well, he only struck out two. Who cares if he was getting them out and didn't walk anybody? Foul back. Somewhat of the evolution of becoming a, a more experienced pitcher when you understand that the hitters, it's all right to let them get themselves out of time. You don't have to really you know, try to miss bats and, and pitch away from contact. Pitch to contact sometimes, get some early outs, and you're going to be in the game in the seventh and eighth inning a lot more frequently. What I've seen just in the last three starts, Jeff, is a guy who's repeating his delivery more consistently. Yeah, and obviously with uh, the return from Tommy John surgery last year, there's a little bit of a relearning process as it comes to the muscle memory in your arm and your delivery. So he's, you know, apparently now getting over all of that. That is whistled down the left field line. Jordan gets to it, playing it off the wall. But they've got no chance at second base, so he says he'll get it to Escobar as quickly as possible, and Crone has a leadoff double. Crone, he was all over it. And that, that at bat. He, he was looking for something in there. Pulled his hands in, stayed with it. That ends in 0 for 13 for Crone. Gordon was pursuing it heavily. He wanted to cut it off and throw him out at second base in the worst way. Now Ionetta. Ball one. Ionetta homered in the second, fly it out in the fourth. Royals scored in the first to take a one-nothing lead, but Ionetta's home run tied it. Cowgill's single scored Ibar to make it two to one, and Trout made it three to one with a long home run to left center. Aoki near the stands makes the catch tagging and staying put is Crone. Sean Burnett starting to warm in the Angel bullpen. He's a left hander just activated today from the disabled list. Well our Academy Sports and Outdoor starters comparison Danny Duffy throwing five and a third giving up three runs. And C.J. Wilson, one run in six innings, but it gets back to that old point. The starters under stress all the time because the offense has been so soft in the season's first two months. Here is Ibar, who is singled and popped up. They want to get to that bullpen, that's for sure. Looks like they will, because Wilson expended 29 pitches in that first inning, and he's sitting on 99. I don't know if Sosha's going to let him go much longer. Especially after coming out of that last outing, 127 pitches. Well, Monty, there was a day, and it wasn't that long ago, where they didn't really stress the pitch, pitch count. You know, they would just go on, on the hitter was a hitter getting to the pitcher you know was he walking a few then they then they would yank him out but nowadays everything for a starter it's gauged around the pitch count right and they do that at early ages even before players get into professional baseball now the you know, used to be you would count them you're going to see a double down the line and would 
That makes it four to one on the base hit by Ibar. We should cut it off to a single. Ibar, he's been used all throughout the lineup. Sosha would hit him lead off, hit him in the second hole because he can do things like that. He hits behind the runners real well and to the opposite field. He's a, a nice element to your lineup because you can put him just about anywhere. Except for cleanup in the three hole. Four runs, eight hits for the Angels now. And Lewis Coleman begins to warm in the Kansas City pen. Foul back. And Rex, to finish the thought on the pitch count, it doesn't seem like the limiting the pitch count has really done a lot of good. A lot more injuries, it seems like, now exactly. than there used to be. And I think a lot of that goes back to when players were used to throwing a lot more pitches, they were able to maybe be in better condition to throw more pitches. Yeah, you're right about that. But since the, the game revolves around bullpens now, you know, pitchers, pitchers are only expected to go six good innings. Yep. And that's where the Royals have an advantage if they can take the lead. Because last year, Monty, when they were so successful, they were handing the bullpen the lead so often in July, August, and September, and they had winning records all three months. That ball struck pretty well. Right center field came off to the races, but it will bang off the wall, and Ibar racing home. Four by Syriaco is not in time. It's five to one, and they have Green caught between second and third. And Valencia tags him out. to the opposite field. Hit the base of the wall. Kane couldn't get it. So Aoki picked it up and then he has him in no man's land. So you see where Hayes is heading towards third base because if it had taken another throw he would have been the guy. So Duffy has allowed five and five and a third trying to get through this sixth. And he throws strike one to Colin Cowgill. But the bottom of the order has really hurt him. Ionetta with a home run. Ibar with two hits. Grant Green, two for three. And the one time they got him out, it was a great play by Siriaco. And Cowgill with an RBI single. Duffy furious, but he's got to let that go. Notice Danny Duffy's demeanor on the mound. It doesn't seem like he has the same level of composure that he had in that last start where he was just very calm, very collected. Tonight, here in a situation like this, we see him get amped up. And when he gets amped up, he that's when he has a tendency to get the ball up in a strike zone and, and you know, the, the, the bad things follow. Well, that's a pitch we haven't seen him throw. Kind of came out of there pretty quick, didn't he? It's almost like a slide step from the windup. Yeah. Ooh, where'd that miss? It's 97. Right where you want it. Go back there and he might get the call again. Nope, fastball.
three of the four Angels with hits in this inning and two of them with doubles. And now a breaking ball in there, strike three. And Cowgill thought it was his, but that's the final out of the sixth. Tickets for less has crowns, Diamond Club, and the best dugout box seats to all Royals games. Guys, ticketsforless.com is your trusted source for all Royals tickets. This year, Tickets for Less is celebrating 10 years of local ownership. Check out ticketsforless.com, and you too can sit in the best seats at Kauffman Stadium. Danny Duffy had plenty of folks here sitting in the seats for him. 35 tickets he gave out, another 55 or 60 coming up from his hometown and now the Royals need to get him some runs fizz in his four starts this year while in there they have scored a total of two runs mm. yeah the Royal bats remain quiet CJ Wilson has a lot to do with that and he immediately gets ahead of Brett Hayes Brett has grounded out twice once to third once to second Royals have four hits three of them singles one of them a double and Hayes with a ground ball to freeze who twirls and fires and Hayes is out number one nice pick by Pujols at first the Royals at Fox Sports Kansas City are offering a unique way for fans across the Midwest to enjoy a game at the K with the B Royal Fan Express fans in select cities will have the opportunity to win a seat on the bus a ticket to the game a Royals jersey hat and much more the first stop for the Express is in Topeka on June 7th as Fox Sports Kansas City Cox Cable and AM 580 are bringing the best fans from the state capital to the K to watch the Royals take on the Yankees be sure to listen to AM 580. WIBQ for a chance to win your seat on the B Royals Fan Express and B Royal Topeka. Nori Aoki, three for three. He pops it foul. He singled in the first, stole a base, and scored an Alex Gordon's base hit. But that was it. Royals took a 1 0 lead. Angels scored two in the second, one in the third, and two in the sixth. Well, that was an emergency swing. He's got a lot of fans out here. Yes, he does. <laughs> I'm not sure how happy the people behind them <laughs> are trying to watch this ball game. Jorge Aoki. Oh, and then Nori gets hit in the shoulder. So he is on for the fourth time. 
CJ came up and in on the Royals left handed batter. So she's seen enough. He got hit on as you would say the hood of the Cobra. Yeah. He'll not get on base and CJ's got to go. Maybe they can get to the pin. Wilson goes six in the third. And this is our Chevy call to the bullpen. Kevin Jepson. a chance to bid on the special Negro League jerseys that were worn by the Royals and Orioles last Sunday. A new auction has recently opened up with additional game worn and autographed jerseys such as Danny Duffy, Alcides Escobar and Lorenzo Cain. All proceeds of the auction go to the Negro League's baseball museum. Start bidding now at Royals.com slash NLBM and own your very piece of history today. Well, Kevin Jepson takes over. He has a 491 ERA, but has not been charged with a run in 16 of eight appearances this year. He has 21 strikeouts, you see, in 14 and two thirds innings. That's good. Yeah, he's got a power fastball, 95 to 97 miles an hour, and he'll cut it as well. So he's got a, a little bit of Wade Davis in it. He's got a curveball and a changeup. He throws strike one to Alcides Escobar, who is 0 for 3. Esky lined out to second, popped up to second, and popped up to right. Royals searching for a big hit, a big extra base hit. Somehow get back in this game. Escobar with two home runs and 17 RBIs this year. Jepson has walked nine. Veteran pitcher who was born right here in Anaheim. He wondered where that last one was. That's the same pitch as the first one. Fouled off. And Eski down to the count one and two. Escobar started the year in the number nine spot in the order. And Omar Infante penciled in at number two, but Infante with that sore back it is now back and ready to play. And he started tonight as the designated hitter for the Omaha Storm Chasers. And the other news, Casey sending out Mike Moustakis to Omaha. And Moose was hitting fourth in that lineup playing third base. Breaking ball gets away from Ionetta and Aoki will take second base. Sosha coming out. He 
He sure didn't stay with Jepson very long. No, he just got the strike wow. out and then uh, going with the lefty to get Hosmer. So Sean Burnett will get a chance. He don't want to let him back in the game. Fletcher with some contact lens problems getting help and we want to let you know that tomorrow is a full day of baseball action beginning with the Rangers and the Tigers and Fox Sports one. Then it's the season premiere of baseball night in America on Fox as the Royals square off against the Angels. The baseball doubleheader begins tomorrow at 2 30 on Fox Sports one and continues with the Royals and Angels at six o'clock on Fox. On Sunday afternoon we're back on Fox Sports Kansas City with the Royals and Angels at two o'clock when Vargas will go up against Garrett Richards. And here is Sean Burnett. They need an umpire though. Yeah they do. Yep, umpires go. He's leaving the field. He had Andy all Fletcher. kinds of uh, contact lens problems as Burnett comes out a veteran pitcher at 15 and 23 in a 3 5 1 ERA. Fletcher just could not clear up the problem that he had with his contact lenses so either he's going to get him rewashed underneath in the uh, Angels bathroom down below and start from scratch. Right now it is a 5 1 score the Angels lead in game one of this series and Burnett who's been on the disabled list for a while coming back tonight. I'll say hadn't pitched in a game last time was May 26th of last year. He missed 134 games wow. in 2013 and the first 46 games of this season on the DL with a left elbow impingement. It sounds like it's more than just an impingement. Meantime the story on CJ Wilson he went six in the third innings through 105 pitches and that was the fewest he's thrown in any start this year. He was averaging Rex 117 pitches per start and that's the most in the major leagues. And he is in line to win this game and for CJ it would be his sixth win of the year but right now they have to hold off the Royals who have Hosmer Butler and then Gordon coming up. Okay, back in the fifth inning, this was not advisable. Okay, I hope he's already in scoring position. There's two outs, and this guy, Trout, doesn't throw like a center fielder. He, he throws like a right fielder. He's got a cannon for an arm. And that was a big lift. And quite frankly, I was surprised that Aoki went because yeah. there were already two outs when Trout made the catch, and he was in scoring position for a pretty good RBI guy, and Billy Butler. So now Hosmer up with Aoki at second base. Escobar striking out on a wild pitch that was thrown. Hosmer 0 for 3. 
And Burnett comes inside for a ball. He's a sinker slider guy. Not overpowering. Hosmer, 293, is a hitter with a runner in scoring position coming into tonight. Burnett twice coming inside and missing 2 0. Sean appeared in six games with Double A Arkansas in a rehab assignment and allowed three earned runs on six hits and five and a third. Got the recall today, and when he's on, he's a very good situational lefty. Two and one. He's their only lefty that they have out of the bullpen. They did have Hector Santiago in that pen, but they sent him down to the minor leagues at Salt Lake City to start. And hopefully get his game back. He was the lefty they acquired from the White Sox in the offseason. Burnett can be tricky because he, he steps towards that first base side and then he cross fires. He throws across his body. Very deceptive to lefties. It's actually his release point is behind the back of the left handed batter. Does it give the appearance that the ball faster than it is, Hud? No, it's just it's just hard to pick up. Hosmer pulls that to the right side, and he will be the final out of the seventh. Angels lead five to one. It takes us around the league. Detroit all over Texas. Ian Kinsler leading the way against his former team. Chris Davis goes deep along with Nelson Cruz, who hit his 15th. And as Fizz told you before, Baltimore beats Cleveland. The White Sox win on a walk-off. Adam Dunn, two-run homer against the Yankees. And Minnesota right now trailing San Francisco up the coast in San Francisco. How about Boston and Tampa Bay? Seven straight losses for the Red Sox. Make it eight. This is our Mazda game break, and it is a walk-off winner for the Tampa Bay Rays. And how about that, HUD? Eight straight losses for the defending world champs in some trouble. Hey, look, it can happen, but, but you know, everything's kind of peaks and valleys in this game. But, you know, the Yankees, they're finding themselves coming back to 500 as well. So those, a couple of those teams uh, get a little bit of their humble pie. Boston now seven games under 500 at 20 and 27. And that's why I know Royal fans asked to be patient, and uh, we are too with this offense. 
but they need to score some runs and Valencia can't make the play and Howie Kendrick should get a base hit and we just heard it from the official scorekeeper it's a base hit off of the leg of Lewis Coleman and now comes Ned Yost and Kyle Turner you know, anytime a ball hits off of a pitcher his body but mainly even his legs you, you always got to go check on him see how things are going this hit him pretty squarely right off the right, the, right above the right ankle and most guys that are warmed up and coming in their their adrenaline's pumping and they don't feel it but you know you don't you hope that they don't overcompensate and then hurt their arm so you got to check on them so Coleman says he is all right. He came on in relief of Danny Duffy, who worked six innings, gave up five runs. And here is Mike Trout, who belted his ninth home run of the year. Change up just down and in on him. He knew he got it right away. Generates a back spin on that ball, getting it elevated. That is our Dodge drive of the game. And here's Trout up. He's popped up twice to the second baseman Siriaco and Homer as we showed you in that third inning. Royals one run on four hits. The Angels five runs on ten hits. Kendrick a threat to go. He's running a lot more this year than he ran last year. He has nine stolen bases already and had only six all of last season. Put him in that leadoff spot. He says, All right, I can bring the goods to go with that spot. 1 1 to Trout, and he rips one into center field. And Kendrick around second base puts the brakes on, and Kane throws behind wildly, but no advance backed up by Brett Hayes. Well, he saw how he Kendrick take a huge turn, and he was going to throw him out at third. And then is how he stopped. In Kane's mid throwing motion, he threw to second. And he was off balance and he and he overthrew. Watch him at the top of your screen, Lorenzo. See, he's all set to throw him. <laughs> he thought he could get him. That's uh, you know, he's a great athlete, obviously. Anybody that could do that, that's that's amazing. He was already getting ready to throw him out. Now Pujols, who has popped up and walked twice. Dangerous man up with two on and nobody out. Coleman needs to keep that ball down and maybe get two outs on one pitch. Alberta veteran, now 34 years old, out of the Dominican Republic. This is his 14th big league season. So many MVP years with the Cardinals. Ripped down the line. Foul. Albert came in the spring training in great shape this year. He didn't have any nagging injuries that nagged him all last year. No plantar fasciitis. No sore knee. And he's a gamer. He played through it all last year. Phantom camp shot of him. And that's called getting that bat head out. Except he was able to hook it. Look at those forearms. He is just ripped. And then he whistles that one foul. And Lewis is to say, you know what? If I come outside, he might hit me. So I'll pitch it inside. So at least he sends it towards third. But he has pounded the last two pitches. Sinkers down. So Coleman tried something different with a quick pitch of his own.
Albert has grounded into seven double plays this year. Coleman would like to make it eight. Lewis started the year and had trouble with his right middle finger, so the Royals at the end of spring training put him on the disabled list. And again, a pitch that is whistled foul, but we still have not seen that same sharpness, consistency down in the zone like we saw last year when he posted a 0.61 ERA, the lowest among American League pitchers who worked at least 25 innings. Well, he's only thrown 12 and two thirds innings coming into this game. So he needs a little bit of time to get his rhythm back. Remember, it was his middle finger that he hurt. And that's so important to a, a guy who really depends on good command and good sync. So we get the action to finish on that pitch. He's gone from ahead in the count. To a full count. David Freeze waiting his turn on deck. Lewis got himself into trouble when Kendrick got a single off of his leg. Trout hammered a single to center field. He really covers that plate, doesn't he? He's got full coverage. He, he's a very confident player. I mean, he's most likely will be in the Hall of Fame when his career is over. Last year, both Pujols and Hamilton got up to those terribly s slow starts, and they wound up combined hitting just 255. Josh battling his way back this year from an injury. They expect him back on Monday. And he strikes him out with a good slider away. Okay, Coleman won that. That's a that's a nice breaking ball to finish him off. Got him off balance. That's the whole key. David Freeze, 0 for three. Twice he's flied out. Another time. He reached on a fielder's choice, but then was picked off by Danny Duffy, second out of the third inning. Freeze coming over from the Cardinals in the offseason. St. Louis needed a center fielder, so they acquired Peter Borges. Freeze came over to play the hot corner, and that was. I really solidified a position that was a weakness for this team for a several years. When the Angels won their world championship in 2002. Their third baseman was a slugger by the name of Troy Gloss. He was a guy. Who had great ability to hit between 35 and 45 home runs. Center field, deep, came back, reaches up, and makes a tremendous catch, robbing a home run from David Freeze. When he got near that warning track, he slowed down, and I knew he was going to make the catch if it stayed in the yard. And he brought it back. Some kind of skills Lorenzo Cain has. Really concentration. That's beautiful. Wow. Tremendous play by number six. 
and Kane playing like the guy who used to wear that number Willie Wilson. So Crone up and Coleman getting away with several pitches in this inning. Pujols hammered one that was barely fouled down the left field line. It missed a home run and now he's helped by Kane in center field robbing freeze of a home run a three run shot. Lorenzo missed some time with a groin injury. And he really took a shot. As he, his body hammered into the wall as he reached up and brought that would be home run ball back. Looper to center field and Lorenzo will not be able to take care of this one. His throw to third hits the runner, bangs against the uh, guard, and then picked up by Danny Valencia. Throne advances to second. It will go as a single and an RBI. And I'm not sure if they're going to give Kane an error on the advance of Throne from first to second. Yeah, we'll see. He misses Trout. He's got him out. We hit him right in the back. Thankfully, they don't give him an air because he was moving on the throw. So it's six to one, Angels. And here is Chris Ionetta. Well, the Angels, we told you, were hot coming in. They've won 10 of their last 13, averaging well over five runs per game in that span. And they have six runs on 12 hits tonight. And the Royals' offense hasn't done much. They have one run on four hits, three singles, and one double. On that last homestand, the Royals in five games scored three runs or less, including their 3 1 victory on Wednesday. Royals were swinging the bats last year, they came here. 22 runs in three games. Popped him up left side. Alex Gordon charging on and makes a fine basket catch in left field, taking a hit away from Ionetta. But Coleman struggles in the seventh, gives up three hits and a run. Kane helps him out, robbing the trees of a home run. by Ram. Come in for the Ram Memorial Day sales event. 
and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Angels lead it 6-1 to one over the Royals as we head to the eighth inning of play. John McDonald comes in to play third base for David Freeze, outstanding defender. Colin Cowgill moves from right field to left. And Corey Calhoun takes over in right field. The new pitcher is Mike Morin from Overland Park, Kansas. And he is a great story. This is his 10th game. Uh, excellent earn for an average at 0.93, but he was called up in Toronto and it was Mother's Day. He flew his mom up from the Kansas City area and uh, he said, you know what? I didn't know if I've ever pitched in the major leagues again, so I wanted my mom to be there and how about that? He gave her a a baseball on Mother's Day and pitched very, very well. Opponents only hitting 188. He's been good. 93 to 95 mile an hour fastball, slider and a changeup. He's got a couple of different speeds to his changeup. Here's a ground ball third. They work McDonald right away and he throws high, and Billy Butler is out as Pujols is able to get back and tag him out. Looks like Albert turned his ankle. That's going to be a close play there. Uh, you see Wakamatsu, he's out. They're not going to ask for a replay on that one. Okay, Albert kind of twisted his right ankle. You see a lot of guys get injured on plays like that around right. the base. One guy trying to get out of the way of the tag, the other trying to tag him. You know, it's an awkward, an awkward play. Aaron Crow warming in the Royals bullpen as Albert with a big smile on his face and a fine defensive play. And here's Alex Gordon, who's been on all three times with a single a walk and hit by a pitch. Michael went to Shawnee Mission South High School and then on to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He was the Angels minor league pitcher of the year last season. In the dirt. Drafted in the 13th round by the Angels in 2012 out of UNC. And from what I understand, he has a pretty good curveball and a very good changeup as well. And there's that floater. He's got one that he throws a little harder, and that one almost acts like a split finger. That's a nice off speed pitch. Look at that great off speed yeah. pitch at 73 miles an hour. And a lot of times you'll see a changeup hut in the low 80s and a curveball in the low 70s, but man, he really takes it. Backs off a lot. Great pitch for off balance uh, to get the guy off. You can see Alex. Alex was was way fooled. And the fact that it ended up being down and out of the zone, that's the best place to put that. So now Danny Valencia. Danny on once with a walk that loaded the bases in the first. Royals had a great opportunity, but Lorenzo Kane struck out looking. And Casey only came up with one run in that first inning. Danny pops it up. Shallow left. Colin Cowgill. One, two, three, go the Royals in the eighth.
Royals. And just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Yeah, I mean, any ball that goes up and stays in the yard, he's so talented, he's going to make the catch. So I had no doubt about this one. Now, it was a, a high fly that he was playing freeze to pull, so he had to go a long way, and then he had to almost slow down before he got to the track. But that athleticism he has is off the charts. Beautiful. Now Aaron Crow, who has an ERA of 3.06. His last two outings have not gone well. He's, he's given up two three-run home runs prior to that. He had thrown no earned runs in 19 consecutive games. And now he will face Eric Ibar to start the eighth inning. The Royals tomorrow night in a 4 o'clock local time game, 6 o'clock back in the Midwest, it will be James Shields against Matt Shoemaker. And that game will be on Fox. We'll be back on Fox Sports Kansas City on Sunday with former Angel Jason Vargas throwing for the Royals against young right-hander Garrett Richards. High bar two for three tonight. His batting average has climbed to 267. Breaking ball misses low and in. Breaker, but Ibar does not bite. So the count evens at two and two. Three and two. So he's gone from 0 2 back to letting Ibar back in the count. Danny Duffy got the start for Kansas City. He gave up five runs in six innings. Goes had a couple of rough outings in his last two outs, but you know he he's uh, trying to find himself now. He's he's hit a little slump. Front shoulder's not not going exactly downhill, and it's not lined up. It's, it, his, his shoulder's been flying open a little bit, and he's lost a little confidence. And as promised earlier in the game, HUD, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Kenny. Good to see you fans at the K, and we'll be back home at the K and get some of those great mug shots. And there's a pop-up into shallow center field. Escobar drifting out, and he'll make the catch. And Grant Green out for the second time. Well, Hub, this is the 25th anniversary of that brilliant movie Major League and there is a class A affiliate of the Cleveland Indians Lake County they're giving away the famous voodoo doll Joe Boo who helped Pedro Serian Serrano you know come up with some big hits when he was in a funk that doll got him out of the funk and so they're bringing that back up and Lake County's giving away 1,000 Joe Boo dolls, bobblehead dolls, on August 1st. Mm. Here is Colin Cowgill. That was a perfect name for a movie major league. Colin Cowgill. That's right. So a walk to I bar a pop up by John McDonald. He replaced Grant Green in the offensive lineup. Ground ball third Valencia has it his throw is in time and Cowgill is out at first base. Okay, coming in hot in the stands. 
Guy thinks Ooh. he's got it. Strand distracted him and just all of his cups imploded. I mean, that skipped around everybody. And now they're negotiating who gets the baseball. Yeah, put a hole in his cup. It broke it. Hang with him. Now Howie Kendrick who goes after the first offering from Aaron Crow. Ibar now at second base with two out. Both of Howie's hits have been infield hits. One that was a swinging bunt rolled down third. The other one glanced off the leg of Lewis Coleman. The Angels with two runs in the second, one in the third, two in the sixth, and one in the seventh. Royals only tally came in the first on a base hit by Alex Gordon with two outs. That scored Aoki. Too short. Escobar gets Kendrick. Uh, we head to the ninth inning. The Royals need five to tie. Meme, the number one live streaming sports service is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of the market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Royals.com for details. They're the fans of Aoki. And here in inning number nine, Fernando Salas comes out of the Angels bullpen and he will face hitters. Seven, eight, nine, and Kane, Siriaco, and Hayes. Fastball. He's going to sink his fastball a little bit. Four seamer, slider, changeup. So the kid from Overland Park worked a one, two, three, eighth inning and really looked like he had an excellent changeup. And now Kane, who walked his last time, will. Go up against Salas. He's earned his third win of the season last Thursday against the Rays with a perfect ninth inning. Fernando, 28 years old out of Sonora, Mexico. Royals came in at 23 and 23, going five and four on their Recent homestand. A soft roller to the second baseman Kendrick who quickly tosses out Kane one down. Siriaco 0 for 3 fly to center field struck out looking and grounded out in the sixth. This young man Salas. Yeah. 24 saves for the Cardinals in 2011. Veteran reliever. 
And he came into this one with 20 strikeouts in 18 innings. Yeah, they're trying to piecemeal their bullpen back together again because he really had a rough time with it through the years, the last few years. They blew 47 saves the previous two seasons. They couldn't find a closer. And Frieri is kind of sharing that role this year with Joe Smith. Strike in there. If they're going to do anything in this division, they're going to need their bullpen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, need that. And hopefully their closing situation will get more consistent. Yeah, there are great expectations here, and there's a line single to center field by Siriaco, so he has his first hit of the night. Rex, the Angels averaged 95 wins in an eight year span from 2002 through 2009, and they went to six postseasons. Since that time, they've only averaged 82 wins over the last four years, and they've signed Huge contracts to the likes of Pujols and Wilson and Hamilton and committed 160 million recently to Mike Trout. So they're expected to not only make the season but go deep. And usually that means a strong bullpen. Brett Hayes, 0 for 3, all three times grounding out. And we told you Salvador Perez is available tonight feeling a lot better likely to start tomorrow night when James Shields goes through that one by Brett maybe Infante will come back games not till four o'clock he's got a chance if he's feels good his back's all right he was the designated hitter today I wonder if they want him to DH one day and then play second base and then see how he is. Yeah, maybe maybe just... come back, meet the ball club in Houston. I don't know. Or when we play Houston in at, at the K. Royals have two here and three at the K Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we're in for a short time before we head out to Toronto and St. Louis. Strikes out Brett Hayes. We'll have Boulevard Royals live after the game with Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery. Angels trying to take game one of this series six to one. And the Royals have had great success. Lately, winning 15 of their last 17 season series. Aoki has been the one guy the Angels have not been able to get out of Syriac, which just took second base in difference. He hasn't disappointed his fans that showed up. Boy, they were all over the place. Rocking and rolling for Nori. Two singles and double and he was hit by a pitch and he slashes this one sharply to Ibar picks it off and throws wide and Aoki's going to be safe on the air by Ibar. Only his third error of the season but it allows the inning to continue. Hit that ball hard again. Aoki's making solid contact. Ibar's got a a good arm. He just pulled pulled the throw. And won a Gold Glove two years ago. Royals have it first and third, trailing by five. Two out in the bottom of the ninth. In the top of the ninth, I beg your pardon. And that ball is lined to Pujols, and that will do it for Kansas City. The Angels take game one of this series by a final of six to one. And Trout hits his ninth home run of the year. So the Angels winning ways continue. They have won 11 of their last 14. 
Royals after a five and four homestand do not begin this short trip well with a six to one loss. We'll come back and talk about it after this.